I mean, they're from a little bit past space for a Halloween art journal page today, getting in the Halloween spirit a little before the 31st of October. So I'm just showing you there a metal die. Uh, now that's an unbranded die from um, the sh place that shall not be named that I got. And I cut a whole lot of eyeballs. So basically this die has, well it's two dies, but it has three pieces when you cut it out. Has that outer ring, is which I'm going on at the moment, has that inner like pupil. And then you get sort of the waist bit when you cut the outline. So you can make different coloured eyes and like you make them bloodshot and all that sort of stuff. So working in one of my altered books, I love working in old, old books as art journals. So this one's my old, altered lion art book. So it's about an A4 sheet of paper on the side in size. So just using matte Mod Podge or paper Mod Podge um, to glue the eyes down just in a random fashion. I just I was just going to say, I thought this was a good idea. Um, with the eyes, a bit of a pun there. If Alexis is here, she'd be groaning at me in the background. Because um, <laughs> I do that a lot with Alexis, and she absolutely goes nuts at me. Um, so I didn't really have a plan for this page when I started. I got this die in and decided just to cut a bunch of random eyes and see where the page goes. Um, so I have just sewed the page first. As I'm working in an altered book, there is text in the background, so I didn't really want to totally obliterate the text, so you can see some of it in the background. I do have some still photos at the end with some close-ups, so you'll be able to notice the text. So one of the reasons I do like working in altered books, because you start, your page doesn't start starkly white. I find sometimes with a white page, I don't particularly know what to do, or I am an R too much. Um, sometimes I start out journal pages, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Other times I have absolutely no idea and just start sticking random stuff and see what happens. And that this was one of those pages. I love Halloween, it's my favourite time of the year. I get envious every year of all the Halloween stuff my American friends get and we can't get down under. We are getting a little bit more. Um, Oh, that must be. That's Alexis's hand coming in, making suggestions on Mummy's art journal page. Alexis is good at making suggestions on Mummy's art journal page. And hopefully Alexis doesn't listen to this, but sometimes her suggestions are better than mine. But let's not tell her that, because she'll get a big head. Um, <laughs> she'll often come and make suggestions on my art journal pages or scrapbook pages, and... I won't admit to it that they were better suggestions or something I had thought of. I tend to procrastinate too much when I do art journal pages and scrapbooking. So just turn the book around so I can stick the eyes up the top. So just giving the eyes a quick dry with my heat tool. With art journaling, it has many layers. So you're wanting to make each individual layer dry before you go and stick another layer over the top. And you'll see the eyes stop coming sort of opaque which is what the glue was and then they come like black. So just adding some clear gesso over the top of them because I did want to put some dis distressed oxides on top of them and I find the distressed oxides I obviously put way too much clear gesso on. So that's homemade clear gesso in a sauce bottle. If you don't know how to make clear gesso you can google on YouTube and I believe I got the recipe from Brave Blue Raven Art and Craft. If you want any more particular, it's, it's basically PVA glue, water, and a white powder, and I can't remember. It's marble dust, and it has a technical name, but I can't remember what it was. I actually got it at a pet food shop, because I googled and googled and googled, and eventually found it in bulk at a pet food shop, so I bought like half a kilo. So, hey, I'm great for white powder for years to come. It was hilarious the day I bought it, because I had half a kilo of this white powder just in a like a bag you put fruit and vegetables in at the supermarket because that's how they bag it up and I was walking around town doing the rest of my shopping and I'm thinking if I ever get stopped by the police, gee that would be hard to explain. Um, <laughs> so I made sure that clear gesso was completely dry and I decided to add some colour to the inside of the eyeballs with some Tim Holtz Distress Oxides. So just going and adding a bit of green to the oxides. I could have used a piece of green paper for the base behind sort of for the for the white bit of our eye but for I decided green for Halloween. And then I decided to add some yellow around 
I don't play with my oxides enough. I do love them and I got more colours recently so I do have to play with them more. But I just, I have so many products now. And do you find that as well? You have so many products that some just get neglected. And my oxides are one of them. So just adding, and I do apologise, I don't know. I don't know the colours off the top of my head. I will go and find them if you really desperately need to know. Um, I believe this one could be Wild Honey. Not sure. If you desperately want to know, leave a comment below and I will go look up what colours they were. The screen is far too small for me to read. Um, read them. And then this is the point where I procrastinate and go, what am I going to do? I don't know what I'm going to do. I decided what the eyes to pop a bit more, so I am wiping the oxide off the top of the black eyeballs and the rings just to, um, with a baby wipe, just to make them pop a bit more because when I put the oxides over the top of them, they did fade into the background a bit. So that was not the look I was going for, so I decided to um, dry them off. So I like them much better when they're popping out. The pages look awesome with eyeballs all over it. So this is a stamp I grabbed. This is a homemade stamp. So just showing there, it's again from a die from the place that shall not be named. I die cut it out of foam, kids craft foam, and then mounted it on a piece of hard cardboard that I use for work. Just an off cut and they make fantastic stamps. And as you can see, I've cut it roughly around the stamp. So I'm still getting ink on the background, but it's not transferring to the page. I sort of wanted to put a border around the page. I like doing borders on my art journal pages because it does contain everything inside. And I'm actually doing them up and down so it's not quite even. So using the whole lot of the stamp and sometimes just using the tip of the stamp. They look, this looks a bit like, you know how you get like scary eyeballs and you can see like the blood vessels in the corner, the red blood vessels in the corner of the eye? It sort of reminded me a bit of that when I started stamping. So I sort of got to this stage and go, oh, I don't know how I'm going to finish it. In hindsight, I probably should have left it. But hindsight's good, isn't it? So just giving the oxides um, a time to dry. And then I decided that I sort of wanted to darken up the border because it looked great, but it still needed a border. So I'm using, I believe this is black soot around the edge, even though it's coming out quite grey. I'm just using a Tim Holtz blending tool to add that. I do like how this this ended up. I, I, sorry, I do like the art journal page at this stage. I'm still happy with it um, at the end, but yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have stopped at this point. I decided to spray some water on the oxides. They are water reactive and they so, it bleaches out to white, so that sort of gave it a really cool effect, more like a smoky effect around the harsh border that I put on. So at this stage I'm still thinking what I want to do. I have no idea where I'm going to go with this page. Then I decided to go to my computer and I printed out some sort of zombie hands in different sizes on that piece of cardstock. I had the in I had sort of the idea of zombie hands coming up out of the earth and grabbing the eyeballs. See, I love Halloween. I just have a really terrible sense of not terrible sense but really gaudy sense so printed these off my computer I just took a clip out image and basically made you to an outline printed them on 210 GSM white cardstock and sort of wanted the hands to become creeping up out of the the earth so I decided the hands obviously aren't going to stay white so I take my distress ink pad Again, with purple to start with, and then I do add some black over the top. Trying to get sort of a different, not different, but trying to get some shading on them and sort of a bit of depth of colour as well. So just working on a bit of glad bag paper so I don't mess up my desk. As you can see, my desk is all messy. I do work on a trestle table and often my paint and different things ooze over the edge of my paper and it is quite decorative my trestle I do need to get out and scrub it again I 
I have got my eye on a Tim Holtz mixed media map. I just haven't made the jump to invest in one yet. I think it would be a really cool idea. I do like some of Tim's products, but some of them are quite expensive. So then I decide to spray it and I'm not entirely sure, not entirely happy with how it came out with being sprayed. As I said, I probably shouldn't have put the hands on it, but hindsight's good, isn't it? But when I'm working on the art journal page, um, you sort of keep going to what you think you want to do. So just drying them off. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know below if you prefer them. Um, at that stage, I didn't know whether I was exactly going to use them, so I actually um, had the printed hand on the back. So I turned them over and actually put my colour on the back and then I'm just fussy cutting them out now because I thought if I fussy cut them out and then I don't want to use them, it sort of saved a step. Should have cut this bit out because who really wants to see me fussy cut? So just defining the fingers a bit more. So yeah, let me know below if you liked the page before I put the hands on or after. I often do that with art journal pages and it is a place for me to experiment and use different things. So often I do go one step further and then don't like what I've done. So try to work on placement. And I decided what, two up the top and one down the bottom. So just inking around the edge, giving them a bit more definition because when I did spray them with the water, it does fade them out a little. And also wanting to cover up the edge where you can see the white as well. So I'm hopefully planning on getting lots of videos up for you over Halloween, um, just seeing what time allows me to do lately. Got a few life updates I have to catch you up with as well, and work is very busy, and life is just really, really busy. It's ridiculous lately. Then I decided I didn't really like the purple, because there's no other purple in the... No other purple in the picture, so away goes the purple. I could have added some more purple to the background, but it just looked funny without having any other colour tying it together. I play around with these hands a lot in positioning. Um, I tend to procrastinate a lot. Alexis is great at um, art journaling and scrapbooking because she just sticks and plonks. She's fantastic and it looks amazing. So just gluing them on with some craft glue. I believe that's the last of my Express It craft glue, which is like a super strong... It comes out like a gel as opposed to a gushy glue, which I prefer. So it's good for sticking on cardstock and things. So just trimming off the edges of the ones I overlapped. And then what do I decide to do to my next? I think I grab out my white pen and do some... Oh no, I decide um, to do some stamping on the arms. Just to bring that. And I've got obviously dark ink on the ink pad I'm trying to wipe off. Because I did not clean my ink pad. So I was trying to bring that the I suppose treeish design over the top of the hands just to tie them in so they didn't look stuck on the page and I do love the result when I hit that green with the water it really bleached out and it looks really cool so now I have the the white pen tussle white pens and I don't get along at all so trying to make the white pen work because I just wanted to outline and highlight a little bit on the hand I've tried several white pens and for the life of me I can't see which one this was um, and they seriously just don't don't want to work for me or just don't like me or they work for a week and then I don't use them for a few, a few weeks and then they dry out that tells me I need to art journal more so I just decided to do some doodling on the hands just to sort of tie them in they looked a bit stark all in that grey grey colour So this is just about the end of the video. So I've put some still photos at the end so you can see some of the close-up detail. And I will leave it with you there. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.